Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Auzu billahi min shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Wa ati Allah, ati Rasul ulul amri minkum. Ana abdukul ajeezu, daeefu, miskeenu, zalimu, jahal. But for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salati wa salam ashraf al mursaleen. Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad al Mustafa, bi madadakum wa nazarakum Sayyidi Rasul al Kareem. Wa nazarakum Sayyidi Ya Sultan al Awliya, Man Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani, Sultan al Awliya Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Mawlana Shaykh Isham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Mabd Khaliq al Khujdawani, Sahib Zaman Sayyid Muhammad al Mahdi alayhi salam, Ruhullah, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyidullah, Sayyidina Ali salam. Thumma Sa'ab Bakr Siddiq, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al Hassan al Salam, Imam al Hussain al Salam, Sayyidina Fatima al Tizari salatu al Salam, Wa Sayyidu wa Sadatina, Ya Rabbi Khfi wa Rahma anta khir rahimeen. And a reminder for myself that a weak servant and that we are completely reliant upon Allah's might and majesty and rahmah and mercy to dress us and to bless us. InshaAllah we talked about energy and we should stay on the subject of energy. Many people agree that we shouldn't be bouncing around to too many different subjects and not completing the understanding of one particular issue. So alhamdulillah in line of, of energy and difficulty and sickness. The realities for us to understand just some of the reality, it's not the reality, everything is just a, a drop within an ocean of understandings. That for us to understand sicknesses and energy and physical influence. That in the physical world when they say these are things that are spiritually happening in this dunya and material people don't seem to understand that. And in the physical world when an opponent wants to fight you in a trained fighters they look to where the weakness is on you. So if they say, oh this one when he fights he has a weak knee. And then you watch in these kickboxing, the whole time he's targeting the knee because the opponent wants to know where's the weakness in this person that I'm about to confront and they target the weakness and keep hitting at that to bring the person down and then they make an attack. Common sense in dunya. Then what do you think about the spiritual realm? That when we talk about negative energies because we don't want to name it because then a lot of new people don't understand and say, well what you're talking about hocus pocus, no just negative energy. Negative energy by its nature is attracted to positive people. So when we build ourselves and do our practices and they say, oh now my, my desires are increasing shaykh since I made salawats and I'm, I'm making all these zikrs and all this negativity coming but they want you to understand, yes of course as soon as you start making your practices and building your light, the nature of positivity is that negativity will begin to come to you. Now how does negativity fight you? It looks for your weakness, it looks for where you have a deficiency, mind and body. If it sees that you have a weakness in your mind, the whole time it's attacking your mind, right? It's a fighter, it knows how to fight you, it's been here forever. Shaitan have been here forever, they don't die. That's why you don't stop your medicine. You have to keep your medical practices, your medical uh, prescriptions, all that can bring you to a state of healing and then apply your spiritual practices. But this is for the understanding of energy and the title of this is Understanding Disease and Combating Evilness. 
When we understand this disease is a spiritual battle because it's dis-ease. These creatures want to cause a dis-ease, to take away your ease and your comfort because when you're at ease you're very strong. When you're healthy you can put up a good spiritual fight. When your mind is sound you can spiritually fight. They're not going to fight you at that level. They want to make you to be in a dis-ease, to bring down your ability to combat them so then they'll go for the mind. They begin to try to influence the mind, whisper into the mind and try to find a deficiency in the mental process. And that's why we're training and that's why all of these spiritual trainings are for that. We said that when we're doing our meditation and our muraqabah you're learning to shut the process of your head off. And that's why a lot of people can't meditate, they just don't want to sit with themselves, they don't really like themselves. And if you don't love yourself how are you expecting other people to love you, to respect you? So tafakkur and contemplation and spiritual fighting is that you train to control the mind. It's the simplest tool that the devil's going to come into. So we talked in the khalwa sessions, they sit and they meditate and contemplate and all sorts of whispers and waswases, every type of vision tries to come to them, scare them, spook them. They don't sit like this. They get scared when they close their eyes, oh I saw shaykh I see scary faces coming to me. Yeah of course, you think they want you to sit and uh, achieve your target so that you can get power and hit them back? No, they scare you get up. So then you control your mind, there's nothing, there's nothing, I'm not seeing anything. You control your ears so that they're not whispering and you play your salawats. You put your headphones on, put salawats and nobody can whisper to you now. That keep your eyes closed, don't think about seeing through your eyes that nothing of is any importance in here. I'm in Medina and I'm at Rosa Sharif and my whole focus Ya Rabbi is to be in Medina to Munawar in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and they begin to train on how to control their head and their thought process. And if there's a disease that Allah has given to them in their head they have to take their medicine. Because Allah gave everybody a deficit, nobody's perfect. Perfection is for Allah But give you something wrong and see how you're able to battle with it. Not about getting rid of it and curing yourself. But how are you going to fight with it? Because Allah is the victory and our life is the struggle. So it's not about taking away a sickness, it's about I live with it, I take the medicine that I have to take with it and then I begin to use my tafakkur to control my mind, to control my thought process. As soon as I can begin to control my mind and things begin to scare me, I'm actually now learning how to control fear. What they're gonna do? They're gonna jump out and slap you? No, they tickle you, they play with your mind. That we're touching you now, we're biting you now and we said before then you control your mind. Then no, no these are angels and with madad and support and all your training they begin to send an energy into your heart to, to control your thoughts, control your mind, switch the narrative into positive. Shaitan always comes to your head to make everything negative, you flip it into positive. If they're not going into your mind and they say the mind is, is too rock solid on this person means they've learned to shut off and they're operating from their heart they're coming for the body also. So like a kickboxer he's looking for where you have a deficit and that's why when spiritual people become subtle, as soon as they get a cut or wound they feel an agitation intensifying in that area. Why? Because a negative force that's always coming towards you 
is looking for a deficiency. See they see a wound, they're coming all around the wound. So to understand negativity you put a piece of bread, old bread out. Negative energy and this world that Allah created of energy beings, they come around something and their sustenance is not like our sustenance. Their sustenance is through their breath, they breathe in their, their food means you begin to see something decay, that's them eating that. When they begin to eat that it begins to become mouldy and decaying. They come around that decay, their sustenance and the means of which Allah gave them to sustain themselves, not like us eating, they breathing that reality in and they're tilling and pulling that force out of it. And that's why we cover our food in spiritual understandings, cover your food so that they don't come to take from it and contaminate it. Cover your drink and your water, don't leave it out overnight un unattended. Many creatures are coming to take from its energy and poison it with badness and bad energy. All that Prophet gave to us of Islamic realities was for energy. So means that's their force coming, you'll see them when you see something rotting. When they come around your feet you feel an itching and a burning. Some people have their nails eaten up by it because of the immense amount of negative energy that is always coming around their feet. Because remember you walk with light in your heart but you walk on a satanic kingdom of earth. When shaitan came onto this earth and has planted his kingdom and when the truth and the falsehood they don't mix and as a result the truth is continuously pushing out the false and the false is trying to come back but Allah said the false is perishing, means you can fight it back. So means these signs are the understanding of disease. They come to where there's a weakness and begin to attack. So in last days when you understand that they come where there's a weakness and that's how they fight you to bring you down, then what happens in the last days? Red death and white death, that before the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi the hadith of red death and white death sudden death. Said so red death was described as wars, the battles. White death was described as pandemics and plagues, sudden death. Why? Because these creatures, these negative energies we describe their benefit is to weaken you. And they don't necessarily want to kill you all, majority of them want to possess you because they want to use the faculty of your hearing, your seeing, your movement, you're like a car for them. Allah created them powerful but yet very vulnerable, they have no form so then they are exposed to elements. And that's why they hide themselves within structures and different places. So when they want to occupy the victim, in the last days they begin to in inspire their human slaves that release sicknesses upon the earth. When these sicknesses come it weakens the immune system, weakens the natural defense for insan. So then this virus and these sicknesses enter within the being, weaken their ability to fight off any type of attack and then from the outside that spiritual being is coming. So they work together and people say, oh you're calling this like this and you call like that, no, no this is a 
This is a, a consorted effort on how to possess humans. And Mawlana Shaykh described most of humanity now are shayateen, they're not human anymore. We'll explain that what that means. So if you're fighting they send to their opponent a sickness. The sickness enters in, weakens their ability. And SubhanAllah how Allah shows that it weakens their breath which is the tree of life. Nafas rahmah your whole power is on your breath. And that's why Allah was teaching and Prophet was teaching, don't smoke, don't burn this tree of life, Sidratul Muntaha is within you. If you harness that breath, if you, if you tame and control yourself, Allah will open a Qudratul Ilahiyya, a Divinely power and that power comes through your nafas and your breath. And that's why shaitan then first attack was make them to smoke, make them to put cold smoke and that would go deep into their lungs and kill them even harder. And before this virus Allah exposed the danger of that vaping. All of that is that all fighting for the lungs of mankind, for the breath of mankind to take him out from reaching his reality. For if one of them should reach their reality they have the power of a thousand men and even more than that because that's not even something understood. If Allah opened for His servant what Allah want to open from Allah's hearing, from Allah's seeing, Allah's speech, Allah's hands, Allah's Divinely breath will be upon that servant that can't even be described its limitations and its endless barakah and blessings can be limited. What Allah gives to His servant when He wants to give hearing? Nobody can say, no it's not possible, what are you talking about? How could you, you talk on behalf of Allah So the potential is unlimited. So you see they're motivated to do that. So when they teach the haqqaiq of the sickness comes in, weakens. As a result they can jump on to that enzyme. When they overtake and insan when they overtake the person means they enter into them. As a result these are very wicked creatures whom their food is the sustenance, their sustenance is the flesh and blood of mankind. The sustenance of these creatures is the flesh and blood of mankind, they eat humans. When you understand then they possess a human being, we understand they weaken the system inside. They, their energy comes and overtakes that insan and enter into them. They take over the hearing, the seeing, the breathing, the speaking. The entire faculty of that human and they inspire the human to eat what they want to eat because the human diet makes them sick, they're not interested in that. And completely begin to change that insan but they're not eating anymore like human and that's why Allah showed us in Lord of the Rings. Because everything is a Divine marketing, Allah's not saying only I'm saving Muslims who go to masjid. Allah created all this creation with love and said, do you see it in, in your media? Do you see the signs on the horizon and then He'll teach you about the signs within you? And on the horizon you didn't see how something so nice became like a golem. A golem was a, a flesh-eating creature, golem, go, 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 what we call qulam is qulam is someone else, a ghul. That old time qul they would conjure up creatures and the qul would eat human flesh. These are all real, these are all the, the, the kingdom of shaitan that you have to believe in angels, good and bad uh, destiny, you have to believe in all of these realms and all these realities otherwise you think it as something physical and look oh it's just a coincidence that people are getting sick. No it's not a coincidence. 
The sickness is to go inside and weaken the defense of insan and they're already waiting on the outside to go on to them. When they go on to them it becomes their diet and that's why then all the horrific signs of last days. When the angels asked Allah that they're going to create bloodshed, it's not these wars that we're seeing. Prophet described the time is coming when this child of seven his hair will turn grey of fear of what he's about to witness upon the earth his hair turns grey. Doesn't turn grey from seeing battle they're all watching uh, more graphic video games. What is it they're going to see that makes their hair turn grey? out of fear, out of shock. These creatures and how they overtake insan and how they, they feed off of mankind. Then we understand the barakah and the blessings of Allah guiding us. When Allah guides, He guides to these realities of energy. He guides to them that be with them they give you a taweez that they have a flag from Sayyidina Muhammad that Imam Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani got, Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Nazim got, confirmed it, Naqshbandi taweez. It's something to put on for this system that you don't understand they're trying to do and that you mark yourself, mark your home, mark your properties. So when they try to cast that sickness and jump into the person, maybe the sickness comes and Allah takes the sickness away and their attack is a defeat. When Allah grant His servant victory, it's victory at many levels that the servant doesn't even understand how bad that attack was coming. When they watch and they hear what's happening on these sicknesses they're saying they're like demonic possessions, they, they felt demonic possessions, they felt horrific energies, they felt attacks as if something was entering into them. So then all these practices are a preparation for these days that are opening. So that when you practice and breathe and understand your madad, we told before in the night before this madad and this awrad that you do is your connection to an encrypted Wi-Fi. When you're doing that matter, doing the awrad as if you're being able to log on to an encrypted Wi-Fi, that it's encrypted so that shayateen they can't use it. And as a result of using that awrad, using those practices Allah is opening of fires into your heart. And that is the secret of la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi aliyul azeem. And in last days the believers whom they are connected into those realities they'll begin to say la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi aliyul azeem. At every time something's difficult Allah at that moment will begin to send a flood of qudra and energy to relieve them, hide them, take them whatever is necessary hawla and quwwah will be flowing. So the, they merely say it and Allah will make something that's necessary to happen. Can't imagine whether it's moving through air, speed and time, whether it's pushing away some sort of an attack because their whole system was to build this connection, to build this energy, to keep this idea and the reality of madad all around them. That we're under a spiritual attack and you need spiritual support, nothing from this physical world going to help you. When we understand then we say, I understand what Allah is giving to us. The sit with them they're going to train you, sit with them they're going to build you, sit with them they're going to explain these realities. So that this energy, this reality, this fires, all this taweez, all of these secure you, your family and your community. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding and that the significance of the awrad, significance of the meditation, tafakkur, contemplation, significance of what's happening when these sicknesses are coming 
and our defense against these sicknesses that the inside controls outside. The software is more important than the hardware. The software is called an operating system, operating system. You can have the best computer in the world if it has the wrong operating system nothing's working. So Allah is just showing in our technology because we love the technology so much that if you don't understand your inside controls outside. And, and shaitan fooled people to play with their outside and fix nothing from inside. They're busy with their salah, busy with their going for hajj, busy for every external action but they did nothing of internal action. And awliya come into our life and teach that if you're not building inside, not building your operating system and if you're not doing your awrad for your Wi-Fi and your encryption how are you going to get your updates? If you understood this is an operating system it's being continuously updated and continuous. For Allah says, I am for at every moment is a new tajalli for Allah It's not one that came like one year ago, at every moment Allah is in a new tajalli. And by the awrad and by the connection and the fires of this reality coming from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad He'd been granted for us this ni'mat, log on to the encrypted signal and begin to receive these fires, begin to receive these lights. These lights will be deposited deep within the soul. The soul and the power inside controls what's happening on the outside. If your inside is empty your outside is crushed, already defeated. But if your inside is strong and filled with lights that power if Allah brings it out it can do many things. One will be to save you upon many things that soul can do if Allah brings out its realities. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzata man yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.